Okay, welcome guys. Uh, in this topic, we are going to discuss about the individual amino acid that is histidine, how the histidine is metabolized and what are the clinical correlations that we should be familiar with. So, uh, starting with the first uh, few points from the classification part that we have discussed earlier also. Histidine is a aromatic amino acid. Is aromatic amino acid. It contains a ring that is called as imidazole ring. It contains imidazole ring. Indole ring was with tryptophan. Imidazole ring is histidine. Histidine uh, also uh, one point we can add is uh, earlier we have discussed that histidine is considered to be essential amino acid but in some books it is written as semi essentials also so i am writing that if option is provided that histidine is essential or not you will consider histidine is essential but if there is no option provided then the second best option that you need to choose is semi essential most of the book says it is essential but some book says it is semi essential so depending on the option i have discussed in other video that how to choose the correct answer whether it is essential or not we have discussed in a separate video that is the classification of amino acid now when it comes to the function of histidine let's discuss the function part see the histidine uh, the function is if you take the histidine uh, molecule histidine is required to produce a special molecule that is with the name of histamine that is the only special product that is there with the histidine that is histamine when the histidine converts into histamine what we need to do is we need to remove the carbon dioxide means the decarboxylation so the name of the enzyme is histidine decarboxylase and in that video where we have discussed about the decarboxylation reaction that is general amino acid we have written that uh, whenever we do the decarboxylation of the amino acid we require the active form of vitamin b6 that is the pyridoxal phosphate right so that is the plp plp stands for active form of vitamin b6 pyridoxal phosphate so this is how the histidine will convert into a molecule that is with the name of histamine that is histamine now what is the use of histamine what is the use of histamine let's understand that when it comes to the function function of histamine histamine works on various histamine receptors such as h1 receptor the h2 receptor the h3 receptors so these are the main three histamine receptors we have h1 receptor h2 and h3 Let's see the location. H1 receptors are found in blood vessels. Found in blood vessel. So when they are going to activate? See, when the histamine will attach to the H1 receptor, the blood vessels, histamine receptors will be activated. They will increase the permeability of the blood vessels. And once there is increase in the permeability, they will lead to something called as inflammation. So I can see that when it is going to occur, it is basically an allergic response. Most of the time it is going to be allergic response. So found in blood vessel and responsible for the allergic response. And responsible for allergic response. This is one thing. Then the comes to H2. H2 receptors are found in stomach. Are found in stomach and what they do is they are basically uh, involved in the acid secretion they are basically involved in they increases the acid secretion so the scl that is secreted that is somehow is regulated by the h2 receptors histamine attaches to h2 receptor the more acid will come in the uh, stomach h3 receptors are found h3 receptors are found in brain and they are again for the histamine uh, we can say they what they will do is the function is non-specific the function is non-specific the histamine attaches and there are various non specific function that is done in the brain now what is the clinical part that is important when it comes to histamine receptors the h1 is for the allergic response h2 is for the the acid secretion the pharmacological correlations we need to understand see there are certain group of drugs that are called as h1 receptor inhibitors h1 receptor blockers 
the h1 receptor blockers because i told you that h1 receptor is basically involved in the allergic response so whenever there is allergic problems we use the h1 receptor blockers such as the cetirizine right uh, the previous generation we have the hydroxyzine so i can say the h1 receptor uh, inhibitor that is very commonly prescribed is the cetirizine cetirizine when it comes to the h2 receptor let's say there is a patient of uh, acute gastritis or acid peptic disease who is having the epigastric pain the retrosternal burning the bitter taste in the mouth that is there that is the components of the acute gastritis or we can say the acid peptic disease if a patient comes to you you can use the h2 receptor blockers and the example of h2 receptor blocker is ranitidin cementidin these are the h2 receptor blocker we have cementidine is is not used in meals particularly the reason is it has a very peculiar side effect that cementidine leads to gynecomastia cementidine leads to gynecomastia so it is particularly avoided in the uh, in the meals uh, these are the h1 and the h2 receptor uh, inhibitors that we should know now when it comes to the histidine metabolism histidine metabolism pathway is really metabolism pathway the the pathway that we have discussed now that was just the function what is the special product the histamine how it is synthesized and what are the clinical correlations that we have now we are talking about the histidine metabolism how the histidine is metabolized see the histidine first converts into urocornate for that the name of the enzyme is histidinase then this urocornate converts into a imidazole derivative converts into imidazole derivative and for that we have the enzyme urocornase then this imidazole derivative ultimately converts into a very important intermediate of this entire pathway and that is called as foam immune glutamic acid foam immune glutamic acid which is in short written as figlu figlu foam immune glutamic acid this figlu will ultimately will convert into glutamic acid will ultimately converts into glutamic acid and for this conversion we require folic acid for this conversion we require folic acid folic acid means vitamin b9 this is what we require for the conversion of figlu to glutamic acid now our primary concern in this entire histidine metabolism in, the, in this entire histidine metabolism what is our primary concern the primary concern is this last reaction when the figlu converts into glutamic acid we require b9 this is the most important statement this is the most important statement in this entire metabolism pathway now why it is most important the reason for that is see if i say that vitamin b9 deficiency vitamin b9 deficiency means the folic acid deficiency occurs in pregnancy which is highly prevalent in the developing countries if vitamin b9 deficiency occurs in the during the pregnancy it can lead to one of the the problem to the fetus is that is called as neural tube defect leads to neural tube defect now the common neural tube defect the most common variety the most common form of neural tube defect that we have is that is referred as spina bifida occulta spina bifida occulta that is one of the common uh, neural tube defect that can occur if there is deficiency of b9 that is there in the pregnancy that is there in the pregnancy having said that i am saying that the vitamin b9 deficiency is very common in developing countries and now i am saying that if it occurs in the pregnancy it will lead to neural tube defect sometime it will be a b9 condition such as spina bifida occulta there will be no problem with the fetus but sometime it will be very grave and the, the fetus may not survive right so 
once we understood this let's say you are sitting in opd you are sitting in opd and a a 32 year old female comes to you and she is uh, very educated and she is coming to you and what she is saying is that she had a history of neural tube defect in uh, her last pregnancy and that child died because of the neural tube defect because of neural tube defect that child died now she is again planning for pregnancy and she is educated enough that she knows that neural tube defect occurs because of b9 deficiency so she wants to make sure whether the b9 level is normal or not so that she can plan for the next pregnancy so she wants to check uh, she wants to know wants to check vitamin b9 status whether it is normal or not how to do that how to uh, say that whether the b9 is there or not see there is one way by which it can be done what we do is we take a we take a uh, injection we take a injection and this injection what we do is it is completely filled with the histidine it is completely filled with the histidine amino acid we inject this in, uh, injection to the lady we inject this uh, injection to the lady now what is going to happen is this particular process is referred as histidine loading you have given the histidine amino acid excess amount to the lady this histidine now will undergo the metabolism pathway will undergo the metabolism pathway as you can see in the pathway that it will ultimately reach to the intermediate that is represented as figlu if the b9 level is normal with the help of b9 if the b9 is present then it will convert into glutamic acid this is the normal pathway that is going to occur so what i want you to understand is if the b9 is normal then only this reaction is going to take place right if there is deficiency of b9 if vitamin b9 is deficit if the vitamin b9 is deficit then what is going to happen is that this reaction is not going to take place then the figlu is going to accumulate so i can say if there is b9 deficiency figlu is going to be increased figlu is going to be increased and if the vitamin b9 is normal then the figlu will be normal so this is how we check whether the the b9 status is normal or it is deficit right we we take in injection of histidine we inject the histidine and this entire process that i have explained you this is referred as histidine loading test this entire is called as histidine loading test or sometime also referred as histidine challenge test histidine loading test or histidine challenge test right so this is how uh, we can find out whether the b9 is normal or not right so thank you